Hi everyone, welcome again. In the last video, we developed a config server which is running on our local machine on port 8181. And we configured a GitHub repository that is hosting the application.properties or the properties of microservices. In this video, we will create a new microservice that will read the properties from this config server. Alright, so let's create a new project. A Maven project. We will name it config client as for the dependencies it's going to be a rest api we need a controller so we will add web dependency and config client dependency this one here let's create the project now the project setup is complete let's quickly verify the pom.xml here we have starter web and cloud starter config which is fine talking about this microservice this microservice will read the properties via config server which we developed earlier so we need to provide some details to this microservice where to find that config server to do that we will open the application.properties file of this microservice and we will provide the address of the config server which is running on our local machine and to find the property to find the key we will go to the documentation and here we can find the key that we need to define in the microservice basically the client application so let me copy this one and here in the client microservice we will use this property this optional keyword represents that if the target config server is down for any reason it will not stop this microservice from starting up if we remove this keyword that means this microservice will not start up if the config server is down at the moment so we will keep it optional and this keyword is for config server to define the config server and here we need to provide the address of the config server so in our case this is localhost colon 8181 so we have defined the address of the config server which is running on our local system next we will add a controller a simple controller in this microservice in the controller package we will name it property controller this will be rs controller and in this controller we will create a simple method with get mapping annotation the next step is we need to read the property which is defined in the application.properties file in that github repository via the config server now apart from the location there is nothing different so we will read that property file same as any other property to do that we will define a variable here to store the string value my key and then we will use the value annotation and here we will bind the property which is sum dot key we can quickly verify if we go to the repository this is some dot key this is the name of property which we need to read and that's what we have defined here and in the response we can read this property and print it my key all right this is a very simple setup what's happening here we have provided the address of config server and in the controller we are reading this property so when we start this microservice it will try to establish the connection with the config server based on the property that we have defined and if this microservice can find the config server it will be able to read the properties so let me start this application as well and we will see if we are able to read the property as you can see the server startup failed and that's because it's not able to connect to the config server because it's trying to read the property file and that's because the config server is down at the moment so let me start the config server as well so the config server is up now let's start the client and this time api started fine and it is running on 8080 port so let's try to hit the url 8080 not the health and here we can see the correct value of the property 
that means the microservice that we created is now able to read the configurations from the application.properties file which is there in the github repository via config server so we successfully created the config server and a config client let's wrap up this video here and we will continue this discussion in the next video in the last video we created a very simple config client a very basic microservice which is reading the configurations or the properties from this application.properties file via spring cloud config server notice we only have a single properties file in this repository and the microservice is reading the properties from this file now this config server is going to be a centralized application a centralized repository of all the properties for all the microservices and when we add new microservices as a config client then we are not going to put all the properties of all those microservices in a single application.properties file so if there are multiple microservices different microservices so we should have a way to create multiple properties files specific to these microservices and in this video we will see how can we create multiple files for multiple microservices so let's get started here in this example we have this config server which is running on 8181 port and this is the microservice which we developed in the last video config client so in this video we will create a new microservice and then we will have two microservices running with the config server then we will create different properties file for these two different microservices so let's create a new project let me stop the services first and let's create a new project and we will name it config client 2 and same as the previous microservice we need to add web and config client dependency so spring web and config client let's create the project the setup is complete let's go to the application.properties file because we need to configure the config server and we will copy the configuration from the first microservice because we need to provide the address of config server so let's paste the property here and we will add a new controller let's name it service to controller and this controller would read a configuration a property from the config server it will be a string property let's name it trade key and then we will have a method that will service the request And here we will return service2 and the trade key. Alright, now we need to bind a property with this variable so that we can read the value. To do that, we will add value annotation and now we need to provide the expression for the property. And let's say we have a property trade.key. So this is microservice2, and in this controller, it is reading the value of this property. It will try to locate this property and if it finds one, it will return the value of this property in the response. Alright. Now, where do we define this property? We have one option. We can define this property in the application.properties file because this properties file right now has a single entry sum.key. But this property is specific to microservice too. So, can we segregate them? Can we keep them separate? How can we create a property file that will be used only by microservice too? To understand that, we will go back to the documentation. And here, if you remember the pattern, this is application name, basically the name of the client application and the name of profile. If we don't provide any profile, it will be the default profile and the label, which is optional. So that means if the client microservice has a particular name, then the config server will look a property file with that name. So here in the microservice 2, we can define a proper name of this microservice using this property spring.application.name and let's say this is trade api so we will give it a name trade api now what will happen when we run this application when we run this api and when it connects to the config server the config server will use this particular name to find the corresponding properties file and notice we have not provided any profile so the default profile will be used 
we have not changed anything else we just provided the application name in the microservices too so let's start this microservice and see what happens let me start the application this is microservice 2 but before that let me start the config server so so the config server is up and for now we will not start config client which is the microservice 1 but we will go to config client 2 the microservice 2 and we will start this microservice as we can see the service startup failed and if we scroll up we can see the error could not resolve placeholder trade.key so what happened here when the service was coming up it tried to locate this particular property via config server but because it could not find this property it could not resolve the placeholder and so the server startup failed now where do we define this property to define the properties while we need to follow this pattern we need to follow this convention we need to use the application name and in this case because the application name is trade api so we can create a property file with this name and when we create a property file with this name following this pattern config server would be able to identify the properties file and the service would be able to read the property so let's go to the github repository and here we will add a new properties file but instead of using the application.properties we will now name it trade api because that's the name of microservice 2 and we will define the property here so let me copy the key and let's give it a value commit the changes and now we need to restart the config server so let's restart the config server so the config server is up and let's now restart the microservice 2 and we got another error that 8080 is already in use that means the config client or the microservice one is still running so we can stop it but additionally we will change the port of microservice 2 that we can do using server dot port a2 a2 all right so the microservice 2 is up and running let's try to hit the controller and verify if it's now able to read the property from the new properties file so let's go to the browser and here we will change the port a2 a2 and we see an error that it has no explicit mapping uh, oh my bad we need to bind the method we need to use the get mapping let me restart it the service is up let's retry and we can see that it worked fine we see the value abc123 which is coming from the new properties file which is trade api dot properties and for this key so that means we can create different properties file for different microservices the only thing is the name should match the name of the file would be the name of the microservice which is defined via spring dot application dot name and if we have defined additional profiles then the name would match the profile name as well and it should follow this convention all right so notice we have created a separate file for the trade api but can the trade api read properties from this application dot properties file can we read this particular key so let's try that as well we will go to the microservice 2 and we will bind a new property here some key and then we will use it in the response let's restart the api so the service is up let's go back to the browser and retry the request and here we can see some hyphen value that means the microservice 2 is not only reading the properties from the application specific properties file but it can also read the properties from the application.properties file and this is important because this application.properties file acts as a common location so we can put common configurations common properties in this file then we can have different property files for different microservices same as this one read api.properties so we can have another microservice let's say order api and we can create a new properties file order api.properties for order specific properties
an order API will be able to read the properties from the new property file, which is order API. And it can also read the properties from the application.properties file. So in this video, we learned how can we create different properties file for different microservices to better manage the properties. So till now we have seen how can we read the properties from the GitHub repository via config server. But notice whenever we made some change in this repository, we had to restart the config server. We had to restart the microservices. How can we propagate this change automatically without restarting the services? That is something we will see in the next video. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.